Can you get the audio, get the audio turned up too? Yep. Cool. All right, welcome to the uh, Board of Select Litchfield's Board of Selectmen's meeting for February 24th. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I'll rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Let's see, uh, the board's just coming out of a um, paperwork review and manifest review session. First, next up is a review of items for consent. In the consent folder today, uh, we have the minutes from February 10th, 2014. Accounts payable manifest for the total amount of $109,116.56. Payroll manifest $44,510.04. We have abatement approval, approvals for MAP 4, Lot 80, and MAP 4, Lot 79. We have an abatement denial, and then we have uh, three veterans tax credit applications. So any motions? Do Mr. So Chairman, I'll move that the, the uh, we approve the items in the consent agenda. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries 3-0-0. Next up is we have a, uh, let's see, request for any other business. Is there anything else anybody wants to add to the agenda tonight? I, I do, Mr. Chair. I'd like to discuss some of the legislation that's pending in Concord and to see if this board is willing to uh, offer support. Uh, our senator is looking for input from the towns and uh, on a couple of, uh, well, one in particular, I guess. So. Okay. All right. So we'll add that to the end. Anything else? All right, nothing else, well, that'll be it. And then, uh, let's see, next on the agenda is a public hearing for land use change tax fund. So, would you like to explain it and then I'll open the floor for public? Uh, well, yeah, why don't you open the hearing? Okay, I'm opening the hearing. Okay, now I will explain it. Thank you. Um, we, this is a public hearing for the land use change tax fund. You recall this is one of the articles we have on the warrant that deals with sort of that excess of um, of um of uh it, it, it deals with the excess in the uh the land use change tax fund that would um not be going into the conservation fund if that million dollar cap goes forward we're required by state law to hold this hearing uh, based on the creation of that fund um, so again, if it's approved, this would take all the land use change tax revenues, deposit them into the land use change tax fund. At the following town meeting, articles could be presented to transfer those funds to conservation, tax reduction, or other purposes. The rationale behind this is so we have a cooling off place for funds to avoid volatil volatility in the tax rate. Concern would be, you know, one big piece coming out of current use one year, you get a large chunk of tax revenue, it drops the tax rate <coughs> automatically, and then the next year taxes spike back up again because of that one-timer. Um, this gives the voters the ability to manage that. Uh, bear in mind, though, the funds can only remain in that fund for a year. So if you were to propose article or articles allocating those funds in a certain manner and they failed a town meeting, those balances would automatically go to that year's revenue to offset taxes. Um, so um, as I said, you know, we talked about this, it's presented a deliberative. The timing on why this is kind of weird because there's nothing you can do at a public hearing about it at this point other than hold it. Mm. Normally these kinds of things, most other laws have caught up and you do this before the deliberative. This is one that didn't catch up. So this is our hearing for that purpose and the voters will be voting on it as written. Okay. Okay, okay. any public here to speak? In support or against? No. <laughs> I'll close the public hearing. Do we have to make a motion or anything else? No, it's there's no action. Voice. There's Yeah, you've already taken on There's no action you can take. Okay. All right, next up is the administrative report, new business. All right. Thank you. Should be. Let's see. Ah, skid steer lease. Mm -hmm. All right, as you can... Uh, Remember from our last meeting, we were presented the uh, challenge of a uh, skid steer facing at least $6,500 worth of repair. Um, I, I had um, 
sent you out some notes in the interim on it. And I think we posted those on our website to inform the general public as well. Uh, we had a uh, failure in the hydraulic system. We knew that it was going to be $6,500 for uh, replacing that. But because it had the system had um, exploded and kind of sent metal shards through the system, we may have found other problems once that was replaced. Um, the uh, actual part that needed to go in, the difference between a new and used part, I know that was a question that had come up at the last meeting. There was only a couple hundred dollars difference. It was around $2,500 for that part, and the balance was going to be labor. Uh, what um, you all authorized at the last meeting was to proceed with a replacement with the thought being um, we would be able to cover the cost of any uh, lease payment from the trust fund as sort of as the fallback. Um, so uh, that so following that meeting, uh, Dave went out and we uh, received uh, Four quotes, looked at options to try to figure out what the best match was going to be at that point. We got those turned around in a day and a half. So on the 12th, Dave and I went through what we had, uh, and um, we opted to proceed with a uh, Caterpillar um, skid steer. Had a net cost of $33,250. Um, that was <coughs> after $2,500 of trade-in for our um, existing skid steer. Um, it was delivered on Friday the 14th and is now in use. So if you've been down to the facility, you may have seen it. Um, there's a couple parts that for our spec that were still on order on it. So, you know, a couple pieces may be changing out, but they got it to us quickly. You know, one of the other reasons we wanted to move quickly is it's a core piece of equipment we need to run in that department. If we didn't have it there, we would be renting it to the tune of 500 bucks a weekend for a rental piece of equipment. So um, <coughs> at, the, at the last meeting, as I said, we contemplated paying for this through a uh, three-year lease funded through the Public Works Trust Fund. Uh, the offer that we uh, received um, in terms of the package on this from Caterpillar Financial um, is a 2% interest rate, uh, which we can do for a five-year lease. Um, that uh, is the paperwork that I requested from them. Um, the cost of borrowing on that five-year lease at 2% is $1,641, so a fairly low borrowing cost for that. Annual payments um, would be $6,978.16. So you're looking at a five-year cost of $34,891.80. Uh, there is no prepay penalty. So I know we had talked about three years at some point. <laughs> so if you happen to want to get a jump ahead, there's no reason why you can't. Um, the, to me, this offered the most flexibility and the least budget impact. Uh, you recall as well, we're applying for New Hampshire the Beautiful Grant, which may um, provide up to $5,000. Um, towards that purchase. I'd recommend that we don't plan on that yet, but keep it as a future possibility. Now, does that have to go into the general fund, or can that yes. as a grant be applied directly toward the purchase? Uh, it would pass through the general fund. Okay. It would, it would basically reimburse us. In the big picture? Yes. In the big picture, it would reimburse us. Okay. Um, you know, so what, with all of those sort of parts in mind and knowing what the numbers are, Right now, I'd suggest that we make the first year payment provisionally from the operating <coughs> budget. Um, later in the year, we should be able to determine whether we have that ability to apply any grant funds to this year's payment um, or pay down further uh, or offset it by covering a related and eligible cost from the capital reserve fund. Um, you also could, if you happen to, if, if all of the planets align properly, you can recall at the last meeting, one of the other things we talked about was paying for it straight up, you know, dumping, dumping the whole balance of the capital reserve fund and making mm -hmm. up the balance. You could choose to do that. Nothing precludes you from doing that. I'm just trying to keep all of your options open at this point um, until you sort of, you see how all those pieces come together. Um, and... Um, you know, again, I would not recommend spending the capital reserve until absolutely necessary. 
um, you know, especially right now, prior to town meeting, and also given our recent winter maintenance costs, we've had a tougher winter than we've right. had for a few years. So, you know, we we have a lot of budget pressure. I mean, the last month has not been kind to our winter maintenance budget. So your your recommendation is that we go ahead with the five year lease. I understand there's no pre penalty. We can decide to pay it off this year. We can decide to pay it off in three years or five yeah. years. Do not take the money. Just leave the money in the, the fund for now until we see where we're at after town meeting and where the rest of the bills laying out mm -hmm. so that we can. Uh, that sounds like it's a sound idea to me. Oh, it makes yeah. sense to me. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, and, and I'd say, you know, timeline is we'd look, we'd have the conversation like September about what if we want to take a different approach yeah, there's no we rush to clear it before the end of the year right, right. we'll be in a better position <coughs> right. closer to the end to right. figure out where we're exactly I mean, right because i mean until town meeting yeah happens, and, we're, and sure we're going to be there and, right and i think we need to mr fine. chairman i'll make a motion that we authorize the town administrator to execute the documents on our behalf um the lease documents according to the method that we were just uh informed okay do i have a second i'll second motion made and seconded for the discussion or discussion hearing none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed abstain <coughs> motion carries four zero zero and donna just make, make a note when mrs jewett walked in yeah because it'll change the vote thank you <coughs> All right, next on the agenda, moving on to old business. Yep. Do wage, and actually, but what, since we touched on it, I don't have it on my list, but I do just sort of want to acknowledge for a moment, you know, I alluded to it before, uh, past couple of weeks have certainly been challenging in the highway department. Mm -hmm. The, you know, yes. with the continuous snow, the freeze, thaw, and the like. So, you know, we've, <clears throat> Uh, you know, our staff and our contractors have run up a pretty serious number of hours to kind of keep our roads in really good condition. You know, the, the, these have been challenging conditions to stay on top of, and it's day after day. You know, this is not like some of those storms we've had in the past where you clear the snow out one day, the sun comes out the next day, the residual salt clears it up. In this case, the residual salt is being scooped up the next day because there's more snow out there. Um, so... Um, cost wise it's winter that's what we do it's not discretionary you know so um, but it's been a, it, it, it's been a, uh, a a hectic couple of weeks so I can't you know and I I, I want to acknowledge acknowledge their work I think we're well, you know all of us are kind of at wits end with winter ourselves Absolutely. you know um, so um, yeah. you, you know I think it goes without much. I mean, I know I've, I've spoken to Jack during all the tough times of the last couple of weeks, a couple of different times throughout the, the shortage of issues we had. His crew and himself did an did a, a one job just trying to keep the roads clear with the resources we had. You know, hats off to all of them. I hope they can get some sleep now and get back to some normalcy. Uh, it's, it looks like we're going to have a real tough spring, too, in the sense of getting the roads repaired because there's a fair amount of the roads that are oh, yeah. broken up because of the salt usage. Mm -hmm. But... Um, you know, they're sort of the unsung hero when it comes to snow. They wouldn't expect the snow to get cleared, and these guys are working round the clock to do it, and I can't say enough about them. They're Mr. Chairman, could the, um, would it be appropriate for the town administrator to either um, share our thank you to the crew or in a letter or even verbally? Because I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that they're doing an outstanding job with the conditions that they've been facing, and I... I um, would ask that maybe the town administrator either send them an email or uh, on our behalf thanking them for all their good work. I agree. Over well, the last I, thing. I know that Jason's getting ready to leave on vacation, so I will send a letter. I'll send an email to Jack and ask him to share it with his staff and crew. Okay, um, and from all of us. Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. absolutely. And, uh, and I and I, I and I, you know, I know Jack has talked to a lot of us, and I know we've all shared <clears throat> our thanks to him already. But I think it's coming from the board makes sense, and and right. I know it's been a tough tough couple of weeks for him so yeah so. and he got it at the deliberative session too from many people yeah yeah all right so we'll do that so like i said where you're leaving i'll i'll send thank it you on behalf of us and and yourself 
Um, I'll do that tomorrow when I'm sitting in your chair. <laughs> using, using your desk because I don't want to go to work. It, <laughs> All right, I'm going to move on to wage plan. Um, yes, wage plan. Uh, I just wanted to make a note on this. Um, when when you all approved the wage plan at the end of last year, there was a timeline for um, putting together a transition plan by the beginning of February. Now, the funds that you had supporting that were not included in the budget committee's budget. So, um, you know, I... I have pushed off putting together that plan because, in some ways, it's simply a paperwork exercise. Right. Um, you know, my that makes sense. You know, my intention is that I do want to put together a plan following town meeting with a better sense of what our budget constraints are. Um, you know, that transition plan had also talked about various intervals to start doing catch up. One of those intervals would be April first. I mean, you know, given that it's not readily there in the budget, um, I wouldn't be proposing any change on April 1 anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so I, I just wanted to let you know, I didn't forget it, and no, I I'm that. not ignoring it. The board made a motion to do that when we approved the plan, and in the plan it actually details the timeline. So should we make a motion to adjust the plan or just leave it as, you're letting us know, I think we all agree. Why, why don't we just let it go? Let's just, let's just leave it for now and we'll get back to, we'll get back to it. Because okay. your motion was also tied to you added money to support that plan in your budget. Yeah. I, We'd have to revisit and that. I would I, and, I would well, and I would assume the board is still in support of trying to get the plan started. The question now is how will we fund it? And obviously a lot of things will factor on how the, how right. the town meeting goes. Right. Okay. Right. I think we'll get a okay. yeah. No, it makes sense. We'll, I'll, we'll take it up on the meeting after the town meeting. Okay. Um, other items, uh, the flyer for the HLN will be in the paper the week before the, uh, the vote. There's a sample, I think I had sent an electronic copy, there is a sample that we're doing it on the 12 by 18 paper. <coughs> so it'll be a shade larger than your sample, than that sample there. Uh, went to the printer last week, so I think everything's teed up for that. So it'll be in the March 8th paper? The one that comes yeah. March 8th? Yeah. The yeah, the 7th, 7th, right. Yeah. It should be, it'll be in there. Um, we can also make that available online and sample ballot and those sort of things. Can we do that now? So I know the, I'm probably stepping ahead, I know the town report's ready to go. Town report is ready to go. Can we do the flyer? The same sure, put the flyer up too. Okay. It's ready. Do you have any hard copies of the town report? Didn't you get I will report? have limited copies of the town report. It's being put together in house. So yeah. it's been printed and then they're binding it in house. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So could I get one? Do you have enough to Um you, you can. Once our once our binder Wait, finishes it. Yeah. Once once our binding <laughs> production commences. Okay. Uh <laughs> My, my binder is sitting next to me tonight, so. Wow, that's okay. No problem. <laughs> is it done yet? <clears throat> the, no. no. <laughs> Why not? Right. She, she not has no machine. machine. Right, now, right now, they would be hand-sewn. Yeah, oh. no, okay. <laughs> so um, they're coming. Um, so yeah, I just want to let you know that is that is in process. Um, and the report is done. Um, and actually, since she is sitting here, I do want to thank Don Donna is the one that takes all of the uh, raw material from everybody and compiles it and fights the software to get it to all look consistent and deals with the town administrator looking over her shoulder saying, you know, that, that one word is in the wrong font and all of those sort of things. So, Well, thank you, Donna, for all that work. Yeah. Because I know I was helping you with a few of those uh, program issues. Yeah. So... so so that that and, is and Jason. Actually, you know, thank you for the work on the flyer too. I know you put together the format, put all the all the word together. We obviously had our input, but ultimately, yep. um, you know, Donna rallied up all the folks for the report. That was the last one. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and you obviously put the flyer together. Yep. And I appreciate okay. the work. That's okay. That's what we're here to do. Um, only other thing that I would mention that isn't in here. I I might have made a note at some point in my notes. Um, is our um, property liability insurance is due for renewal in July. Um, and so given that we're coming out of a three-year cycle, my intention is to secure some quotes. Um, also, given the interesting status at the moment of property liability trust, um, I think um, if you've followed any of those other notes as part of the whole 
exchange with the Secretary of State and Bureau of Securities Regulation and all of the various <clears throat> court cases, they are actually in an interesting receivership now, having been spun off last year as a separate company, are now under the umbrella of Health Trust again because of a debt owed to Health Trust. Mm -hmm. It's all very twisted and confusing. So uh, my plan is to review with them what they are. I mean, we obviously have no issues with service. It's just they have sort of this overarching question. Um, you know, Primex is the other major pool player. We were with Primex. I'm going to get some numbers there. Um, and, I, and I'm actually going to look in the um, limited way in uh, commercial market. Uh, the insurer that we deal with for um, some of our supplemental uh, for uh, short-term and life, sh short-term disability, long-term disability life insurance <clears throat> has a municipal services division. And so they are you know, well-versed in kind of what we need. Uh, so I've started the process with them as well. So I expect that, um, you know, given everyone's timetables, that um, you'll be getting a recommendation back from me in the beginning of May as all that comes in. Okay. Anything else you want to add? That's what I have. Okay, moving on to selectman reports. Anybody have anything to report? Well, um, I'll just note the Winter, Winterfest, which was last weekend. <clears throat> uh, I know Jason and I, uh, Chief Ratzel, uh, one of the firefighters, forget the gentleman's name, and Derek Barker's wife and Terry Brian all judged the chili. <clears throat> it was awesome. So uh, great turnout, at least from my perspective. I was there in the morning and throughout the chili fest and left around 2 o'clock. A lot of people coming and going. I think the weather was nice. It started snowing when I was leaving, so I'm sure it got more wintry <laughs> as the evening went. But uh, you know, hats off to uh, Keith and Keith Buxton and the crew involved. They did a great job again. Looking forward to the next event, and actually looking forward to what they can do in the spring in the summer. Mm. <laughs> now that we have the pavilion down there and all that <laughs> stuff, I think that opens up that facility for a lot more community gatherings. And I, you know, and, you know, I think this year was another good example. And it grew. It, it was a lot bigger than it was last year. Mm. And so I think they're it, doing uh, a remarkable job with the limited resources they have. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with the commitment that they've shown and um, yeah, their ability to throw these things yep. together. Yeah, I hope they can continue it because I think the community, the ones that do participate, and it keeps, looks like it's a growing group, um, seem to enjoy it. And, and the community's of better off for them. Yeah. You know? yeah. I do want to do another little footnote on that. I think I was really happy that you know we were able to assist. Actually, it was so much easier. I thought uh, Keith had said, "Hey, is there any way we can take credit cards?" And so um, I asked uh, town clerk because we have that functionality, and within a day or two, we had that functionality turned on oh, uh, nice. through through the existing system we have at no additional cost, an additional module that was wow, there. Nice. So, um, you know, so I, I, that was a, you know, it, it was nice that we could support that. There was also kind of the, John made the mistake of walking through the hall at the wrong time that day um, when, you know, he said, hey, wouldn't it be great if we could have Wi-Fi out, out there to use all of this? So um, that Wednesday before John set up the equipment to make sure that we, there was Wi-Fi available nice. as well. Nice. So. Excellent. Yep. No, I think it's great teamwork. In yeah. Town, so. Wouldn't it have been better this weekend just saying this weather, this weekend were perfect. Yeah. It's like last year's. Yeah. I was down there this weekend, though, and uh, it was all melting and all puddly and muddy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So there's something to be said about the ground still being frozen and a fresh coat of snow to kind of make Winterfest Winterfest. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was not this past weekend. It was the weekend before. But um, yeah, it was a beautiful weekend. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I think they had nice heated areas. It, it seemed like yeah. they they did it right. They accommodated you know all different folks and different activities. So it was good. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, anything else from the selectmen? No. Items moved from consent. There were none. Other business. There was one item, Mr. Lemire. Uh, you wanna? Yeah. Also, uh, NHMA. To... Yeah, that was a yeah. If you wanna. Uh, okay. Um, I was at a meeting, and apparently we have not, um, we're one of the few communities that haven't paid yet. 
and I and I know there was discussion before um, it was uh, to remove money from the budget and apparently that vote was taken and I was not in favor of it because I personally am a beneficiary of all of the um, help that they're able to give the municipalities and the different um, communities uh, and I talked to our town clerk and asked her how if she used them a lot and she said oh my gosh absolutely um, and I know Jason uses their um, resources so uh, Mr. Chairman I'd like to make a motion that uh, and the budget committee did not remove the funds from the budget and so consequently I'd like to move that we maintain our membership in the New Hampshire Municipal Association and consequently pay the bill to retain that membership for this year. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Motion made and seconded. Uh, further discussion or discussion? Yeah, I'm, ju I'm just going to touch on that. Uh, I, I originally voted against it. Uh, and afterwards, I did some homework, did some research. And after doing my research, I, I definitely think uh, it would be a benefit for the town to uh, go ahead with the membership. Um, you know, again, I just think it would be a benefit for the town. So, yeah, yeah my support on I, that. I would agree. I think the challenge was during the time. There's obviously the, the the organization is under some change, and we don't know what that change means. And have continuing to benefit from the next year as we understand those changes makes sense. Um, well, so the the, the municipal just, association is not. It, it's health trust uh, and property and liability. The, the the municipal association is on their own, and they're doing fine. They're, they're, it was divested, and the municipal association's mission and function is still like they were before to support the towns and to support anything that the towns and cities need. Okay. Um, so I'm very comfortable with that. I, I have been all along, so I'm fine. All right, any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 4 zero, 0 So, Jason, I know we've been holding off. Mm -hmm. uh, based on a prior action, if you can go ahead and get that process, okay, or at least have maybe Karen process it for you, yep. get that squared away, or I can. Whatever That's okay. And Mr. Chairman, I have one other thing. Um, yep. Senate Bill 367, which is the road toll increase <coughs> uh, or the gas tax. Uh, I've been to a couple of presentations uh, where um, this was discussed. I've listened to both sides of the issue and what it boils down to i think it, that as select persons in our town i think we need to I'm, I'm under the impression we need to make sure that we maximize any state aid that we can because we've been marginalized uh, our, our aid and revenue stream have been reduced tremendously our state uh, all of these costs that have been pushed down from the state um has caused us some financial hardships every town over the past few years especially from the retirement system the towns derive 12 percent out of that fund the towns uh, 12 percent of that fund is designated for uh, road improvements for the cities and towns our senator apparently I didn't talk to her directly but I know someone that that did and she said that she hadn't heard anything from the cities and towns um, I would like to see what how you feel about proposing that we support Senate Bill 367 um, in raising the road toll. It hasn't been raised since 1991. And, I mean, I drive 100 miles a day, and I'm willing to pay my fair share so that we could have some, you know, have the state get more money to repair the roads and, and allow us to get another, uh, at, at least to bump up our share. Uh, well, would it bump our share? I mean, I'm reading the I'm reading the text, and it doesn't. Well, we I mean, get important text. twelve percent of it goes to the cities and towns, so any increase in that it proportionately goes to the cities and towns of that twelve percent. The thing is, if we do nothing, we'll be in the same situation. This has been going on and on. I, I'm just thinking that we should at least let our senator know that we do support this. The thing is, we may not like it in the form that it's in, but it will go to a committee of conference because there is support in the House. 
The House does not necessarily support, apparently, the automatic increases, the indexing, which is fine. But the Committee of Conference at least can iron that out. I would like to at least tell our senator that we are in support of the increase so that, and for the reason is that we're, we're looking out for a little bit more revenue for, for our towns, uh, for our road program. Okay. And if, if you're comfortable, well, well, our senator needs, needs to hear from us. She yeah. needs to hear from us. And so I'm reading the text. I don't see where it raises tolls. It looks like it raises No, no, gas it's tax. called the gas tax, but it, the official name of it is the, the road toll. Right. Mm -hmm. But they're, raising, they're gonna raise it by 18 cents or something like that. Yeah. So how much so is a road intend toll to raise of 18 it, cents per gallon? Be, be well, it's four cents this year, yeah. and uh, four cents so next, next year, year. and, and then five cents the following uh, year? No, I don't think it's that high, Pat. Yeah, it's it's, 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 it's yeah. continued to change. I mean, right. it's been, it's been four, four, four. It's been four, right. and then CPI. Um, it yeah, will it, not be the same when it comes out of conference. There's, right. There's been a range of different answers. I mean, the the, the challenge, as as Brent said, is nothing has changed since since '92. Right. And and the thing is, I would just like to at least let our senator know that we're in support of something, some mechanism to raise that so that we can recoup some of the. Funding back for our block grant. The question would be: Is what you know? What are we? I, I agree. We're we're in agreement to raising the gas tax, which is what it is, the gas tax. But at what level? Well, let's put it this way: I think we should support Senate Bill three sixty seven, as written at this point. Um, because that's what's on the table. Is that four cents? Four cents? And what's it, it's the unclear in the bill. It's it's not clear, Pat, because they're going to um, they want to index it. But see, the House does it. But at least the concept of going, of at least raising it four cents yeah, next actually, year would actually give. Actually, it is. It's, it's four cents in 15, four cents in 16, four cents in 17, four cents in 18, and then six cents in 19. Okay. That's what they're, I that's what it's covering. Yeah. 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 <laughs> see, local Highway A will go from 3.8 million. Well, it looks like it doesn't increase at all. It's zero dollars here on 15, which I don't understand that. And then it's. I, that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, no, Probably it's it a would, new, it's an additional it, it, each this year. Would be, it would, this would be a $3 million more in 16, 17. So right. it's, first year it's going to collect the funds and then it'll, it'll right. start. Right, we get paid, right. we get paid last 16 year. 16 and start. I mean, well, I'm I, not 12%, what would we get as a time? 12%. Well, whatever our, Whatever the total dollars Whatever are the total dollars. Um, it, 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 it's in a, it, it's in a uh, formula. Uh -huh. Depending on our road miles, our population. Or, yeah, so, so the state gets... It will be something. We It'll get twelve percent of that. Ten percent is left. Yeah. Uh, that's the you know whatever. But it's something, and I agree. I mean, as much as I hate to see gas tax go up, that is our only. That is the only way we're getting our roads done. And I if know. they don't do nothing, well, they did nothing last year, and look what happened. Yeah. You know. Um, all right, I'll make a motion that this board support uh, Senate Bill three sixty seven and notify our senator, uh, Susie of our support if this passes, of course. Do I have a second? But it's gonna pass the Senate first. Senate first, first right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? I mean, all we're saying is we're in support of it. We're asking the Senator to support it. Right. Going forward. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? I'm not in favor of six, uh, way back, about four or five years from now. That's a lot of money. A four to a yeah, six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me say, I'll second it for the more further yeah. discussion. So it's seconded, it's motion made by Mr. Mr. Lemire, seconded by myself. Further discussion? I guess, I, I mean, with me, I mean, if the, what, what's, most of the time you hear people complain, one, property tax, two, gas, right? Mm -hmm. Every every time the gas goes up, it's what, 333 now, it goes up 10, 10 cents and you hear it for oh, two weeks, you know what I mean? I totally agree that we need to do something um, with it, you know, because just driving around town, mm -hmm. driving around anywhere you go, you know, Manchester, not only our town, um, Londonderry, all the towns. So I, I agree that us as a board should probably support this as much as, much as it, you know, See, this is the the only, yeah. right. This is the only mechanism they've been able to come up with. And this is a bipartisan bill 
This is sponsored by Republican and Democrats this year. This is the difference. And Who, who's some of the Republican senators? Uh, Senator Roush. Roush, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and this is why it uh, makes it a little bit more um, possible <laughs> that it will pass because it's got bipartisan support because they've listened to the presentations and they figured out if we don't do anything, do this, we, our road system. Do we know where our, where our House representatives are on this as far as what their version is? I know what they object to. Are they, are they in favor for it in principle or? Yes, because their bill came, the bill came out of the House last year. Representative Campbell from um, Nashua is the one that pushed it. Yep. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure any of our representatives voted for the bill yeah. that went through the House last year. Um, but if you remember, to be fair, there was kind of there was the tug of war between gas tax and, and casino, game. and so and this is and and it, because what you know a little bit of background on this too is that the um, we've been postponing making a real decision on the gas tax because nobody wants to be the person who votes to increase taxes. Um, and so what has happened in the past in the highway, state highway department is we've used a series of gimmicks. Uh, we had a vehicle surcharge registration for a while, which actually helped us because again, we got that share. We so you remember for a few dollars, years, yeah. we were like getting 200, $220,000 from block grant. Now we've dropped back to 170 because we got our share of that surcharge. They sold part of I-95 to the turnpike, mm -hmm. um, which then, all of that, all of, so and all they of had those, stimulus money for three years, right? And all of those pieces are now They're falling gone. away. I mean, the budget as it exists now shows a forty-eight million dollar operating deficit for DOT in their fiscal year sixteen, and one hundred five million in fiscal year seventeen, which. That's not, and that's repair and maintenance and all that. That's, that's not, not any new construction. That's not new construction. That's kind of like core operation. I mean, the commissioner has said that, you know, it could mean upwards of half of the department needing to be let go. 700. So that's before we even get to dealing with building roads and bridges. Mm. So, you know, the, the trick is figuring out, okay, well, nobody wants to pay more, but all, there's a point at which it's all going to come crashing down on us. I mean, ultimately... Right. We won't have a choice uh, if it's, we don't it, do it's the, it's the same dilemma that you guys faced locally um, with the article that we're proposing. Right. Jack and I came in and said, you need $4.6 million to, to fix is your roads. Um, where's and, it coming from? You know, where's it going to come from? We all realize we can't get there overnight, but... You know, you looked to let's. You know, you looked at the article that we ultimately took forward of. Okay, let's try to put a little bit more in the pipeline. Um, so See, last year so the House bill was defeated in the Senate because the Senate uh, wanted gaming, and gaming the casino was going. They were going to direct part of the revenue from the casino to the roads. Right. Well, that failed. Right. The House didn't vote, so that was the tug of war last year. This year. They got together, Republicans and Democrats, in the Senate. They pushed, put forward the bill from the Senate, mm -hmm. which kind of mirrored the House bill last year. And they're figuring that it, they can get together with a committee of con conference, iron the bill out, and it has a good chance of passage. So. And if this bill is not passed, I mean, I hear about the shortcomings with as far as resources and roads, but how does it impact the town? Um, well, the what? Oh, okay, well, it it, 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 it'll impact the town. Um, you know, uh, your potholes on Hillcrest and 3A will go further and further down the pipeline to get fixed because mm -hmm. the money's not there. The repair crews aren't there for that. Um, the the plowing protocols the state uses will likely be revised to plow less aggressively. Isn't and they've already, done isn't that. Isn't already happening now? Yes, it is. It, it has. I mean, they've already backed off somewhat. But My there's... God, 3A last week. Um, you know, well, the, and Hillcrest is getting awful. done by us because we're doing the pave through, the, the cut through, right. and doing our own roads. So they're yeah, but Hillcrest in the winter was always done by us. Now, no, and, it's, it's easy for us to yeah, do. That, that was the agreement we had years ago. Hillcrest winter was done by us. Summer was done Summer by the state. state. The, the, um, the, the other thing that is... Um, that is potentially out there, and I, I think that there would be a radical hue and cry if it happened, but that share that we get of block grant is not enshrined in no, I know. guarantee. 
right. uh, that our <coughs> share could be adjusted downward to offset what are seen as critical state DOT issues. Well, that's my concern. Uh, yeah. You know, the problem I mean, is this, that's this, kind of the scorched this, earth. But this doesn't actually guarantee us anymore, neither. I, it says 12%, but 12% of what piece of the well, pie? Well, let's put it this way. It'll, it'll certainly, it, it'll certainly help, it help from it. losing any more than we lost. Yeah. It, there well, was I, a I point think last we, year where we had a nice chart that they showed us at one of the previous iterations that showed, you know, some serious money coming back to us over that five-year pl uh, right. plan. So I'm, I'd be in favor of a, of a letter to, this, to, to our senator... But I think there's got to be some, you know, our support is we're in, we're in, we're in support of it as is written. But we also like to see, I mean, I don't think we'd also see ways how do we protect the town's piece of the share, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we, how do we ensure that our road, our block grant funds don't decrease any more further than they have? You, you can't really guarantee that with, it, unless the language is in the bill. And we certainly don't want. They can't change the language now. They could do it by conference. Well, I also like to know we what the could, senator is doing to help protect the town's share. Sure, right, uh, we we uh, could certainly ask that question. I think yeah. it would be appropriate yeah. to ask that question. I mean, I think we, if we were going to put together a letter to the senator, if we all agree to do that, saying we do support it as is currently written today, mm -hmm. you know. But in addition, you know, how do we? How, what else can be done to protect the town's? What mechanism building? can be used to right. protect? And, and increase the town share of block grant. If, if they don't increase it, I'm okay. I, I mean, I'm yeah. saying it because that's also impacts our tax dollars anyway. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but how do we make sure, how do we protect our share to ensure that we can continue in the programs we already have in place? Because if that number goes down much further, you know, our 25 year mark is going to be 50 years by the time we get there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, right. Jason, I guess, you know, if, if the board does approve going forward that I would like to use your help to mm -hmm. craft up a letter yep. with that suit sort of that two criteria thing right yeah we support it in this current form or as is but you know but mm -hmm. it is. how can you help us but how can you help it? us what, what else but can we, you do? We, we want to protect right. the municipal share yeah. right. right how does it how do you help our community make sure that we keep on getting what we're getting mm -hmm. if not more mm -hmm. so. for the discussion all right all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed abstained motion carries four zero zero so Jason, I know you're leaving, but uh, you know between your gambling, if you can craft up in Google Docs, we can work together on it. <laughs> it's, only, it's, only, it's, only, it's only quarter or seven. He can stay till nine. Ooh, ooh. Well, you have Wi-Fi on the bus, you said, so you can do ooh, it. Way I down. can do it on. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> sure, me and then uh, if, it, if, it, if, it's, if it looks good, we'll we're agreement. I'll print it out. I'll even sign it, and we'll get Donna to mail it for me. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. The only one chose to go on vacation, not me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sorry, uh, that seems to be it on our agenda. Is there anything else for this board to take action tonight? Mr. Yep. Chairman, I'll move we adjourn. Do I have a second? second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Four zero zero. So we, fo evening, folks. We're, our next meeting will be March 10th? 10th. Yeah. Yep. Our next meeting will be March 10th. As I understand it, there will be a candidate tonight on March 8th. Stay tuned to your local resources to tell you what exactly that is. It's going to be at Campbell High School at 9 in the morning on March 8th, Saturday. You know March that. 8th. All right, cool. Because I got an invitation. Because, oh, good, because we haven't heard anything because yet. Because I so am good. running. Yeah, you are. Oh, that's right. Um, all right, so Candidates Night, March 8th, 9 o'clock, Campbell High School. We'll get that out on oh, no, our Facebook just, page and stuff. Good. Our next meeting will be March, uh, March 10th, 6 o'clock here in Town Hall. Town meeting, election day, starts at 7 o'clock on March 11th, Tuesday. Um, from 7 to 7 at the Campbell High School Gymnasium. So we have a great evening and a great couple of weeks. Good night.